Kalkadosh Bokotosh, we're on 781, when we spoke about why did we have to have the word Shanit and also Bimbichol Shana Veshana. So we just finished off by saying, we needed to use the word Shanit, and we needed to write the word Bimbichol Shana Veshana. Because if it was going to be from every single year and year, right, which had to be Adar, which is close to Nisan, so then I have a question on Remember, we had two different preferences. We had that every single year, it's always a dad after Shvat. But then we had every single year, it's a dad which is Samuch Nisan. Now you have a contradiction because in a leap year, you don't have that. You have one Adar which is close to Shvat and one Adar which is close to Nisan and they're not the same Adar. One is Adar Aleph and one is Adar Bed, like this year. So which one's more important? So one of them said, if you remember, that it was more important to do a das samuch lishvat. Why? Em avinim la mitzvot. Em avinim mitzvot means you have a mitzvah in front of you, don't pass by it. You have a mitzvah, do it. Don't wait. And that's why, by the way, if you remember, that's the nachalah, it's the second. Yeah, that, but that's nachalah. That's something completely different. Right? We're talking about the when do you do the megillah. And we're not talking about al-chalam We're still in the gemara, where the gemara is trying to decipher which one's better. Okay? And by the way, Ashkenazim do it in the first one. Oh, yeah. Sfaradim do it in the second. Ashkenazim do it in the first one? Yes. Oh. No, oh. Nachalot. The first okay. Adam. The first Adam. Okay. okay. Uh, so, the Gemara said, I mentioned that in the Agadah of Pesach, the Ramah has a different way of doing the Seder plate. How does the Ramah do the Seder plate? That you never pass over a mitzvah. So you start with the Zeroah, with the this, you know, like all the way, if you look and pay attention, right? We have, there's two different ones. There's the Ramah, and then there's the Arizal Kadosh. The one of the Ramah is because you never want to pass over a mitzvah. So the same thing here, you have the first Adar. You don't want to pass over the first Adar. Kamash Malana, Shanit, that it has to be Adar Shanit, the second Adar. Now, if it was only going to be written the word Ashanit, I would have have a Havamina, but Tehila, the Lechatchila, right? But Yishon Vegam Shanit. Maybe you have to do both. Also an Adar Yishon and also Adar Shanit. That just like every single year, it's only once. So to this year of a leap year, it has to be once. So we have to make that decision whether it's going to be the first one or the second one. So now the Gemara says, What is Rabbi Yezab Rabbi Yosef? That he says that Chodesh Adar is also going to be in Adar Samuch Shvat. So why is it written the word Shanit? According to him, you do everything in the first Adar. So then why do you need the shenit, right? Hadara shenit. What is a shenit? So he comes and he says, he needs it like Rav Shmuel Rav Yehuda. For Rav Shmuel Rav Yehuda, the Rama Rav Shmuel Rav Yehuda, but Tehila Kavua Beshushan, Ulvasof Bechol Olam Kulo. Do you know at the beginning, they instituted Purim only in Shushan. Afterwards they came and they instituted it in the entire world. At the beginning, it was only in Shushan. Okay? And that's why he says that's a shenit. Right? Why? Because the first, the Shanari Shona was only in, Sh- in Shushan. There was only a Purim. The concept of Purim was only in Shushan. The next year, that's when they came and they started doing it in the entire world. Okay? So, Amar of Shmuel Bar Yehuda, says of Shmuel Bar Yehuda, Shalcha lahem estel hachachamim. Comes Esther, Hamalka, and she sent to the rabbis. And she told them, Kivauni ledorot, I want you to be kovea. I want you to set, to affix the Purim for generations. To make it like a Yom Tov, to read the Megillah, to do everything. Shalchula, they sent her. Kinat meoreret aleinu leben haomot. What, you want to start causing a strife between us and the, the Goyim? Meaning what? Every single time that there's going to be a story that we come and we're going to kill out the Goyim, we, we are going to make a big, uh, you know, like a big uh, book party, out of it, big a big party. party, and then you're causing uh, problems here. What, what, what are you doing? Shalchala, she says, kevar ketuba, ani al divra yamim, ma'achem adai yukhalas. She says, what? We're causing it? It's all written, already written in the history books. In the history books of Madayu Paras. It's all written, already written, the entire story of Purim. So therefore, if we're going to write it for ourselves, we're not adding anything extra. Don't worry about it. Okay? Fine. Rav, Rav, Hanina, Rav, Yochanan, Rav, Chaviva. Says Rav, Rav, Hanina, Rav, Yochanan, Rav, Chaviva. Matsmu, they, all four of them, they were teaching their students in the following way. Mekule Sedr Moed. Right? In all of Seder Moed, Kol Zuga. So now they were teaching. Now, before we continue on saying what exactly they were teaching, we're going to say that any time that we have this group of four, 
right? Because this was a group of four. Rav, Rav Hanin, Rav Yochanan, Rav Chaviva. The Kule Sunna Mohel, Kol Ki Aik Zuga, Chilufe Rav Yochanan, Umeayel Rav Yonatan. Sometimes they take out Rav Yochanan, Rav Yochanan, and they put in Rav Yonatan, which is a very similar name, but it's obviously two different people. So Shalcha Lehem is Selah Chachamim. So they were the ones that they taught. Again, it was a group of four. Only question is, if it was in Moed, so then you have to take out Rabbi Yochanan and you put in Rabbi Yonatan. They sent, Esther sent to Chachamim Ketvulu Ledorot, Shalchula, they sent her, Halo Katafti Lecha Shalishim, Shalishim Velo Rabim. It says in Mishle that I already wrote for you, Shalishim. Shalishim, we come in three places, which means that only in three places is it mentioned the war between us and Amalek but not four places, right? Twice, it's written in the Torah. Where in the Torah? The Shalach, Chazak Baruch. You cheated? No, no, ah, very good. Right? At the end of Parashat, Veshalach, the Maftir of Veshalach, we read, 100%, 100%, yeah, 100%, right? And also, exactly. Yeah, we read it on Purim, by Purim, in the morning, we read that, that parasha, parashat v'shalach the maftid. The second place, right, where is it written about Amalek? Allah sabal koreh. Yeah, Raveli. Second place? Al Amalek. Very good. Kitetse, right? In Kitetse, what does that mean? In Kitetse, we all, that's the maftid of Shabbat Zachor. Okay, so therefore it's going to be twice in the Torah. Once it's going to be written where? In Shemuel. This is when obviously Agag and Shaul, right? Everyone knows the famous story, right? Agag and Shaul. So therefore there was what? So therefore it's written three times already in the Torah. Twice in the Bible, right? In the written Torah. And once in the prophets in Shemuel. So therefore it's only going to be three times in the Torah and not four times. At Shematsulu Mikra Katuba Torah. Until they were, they found in the Torah that it's written, Shketov Zot Zikaron Basefen. Right? What does that mean, Ketov Zot? You're going to write this, right, as a remembrance in the Sefen. So now this Ketov Zot, right, is also, right, in the same Pasuk of, of Beshalach over there. So there it says, Vesim Ozne Yoshua, Ketov Zot, Mashakatuv Kan, of Mishne Torah, Zikaron, Mashakatuv Anevim, Basefen, Mashakatuv Anevim. They wanted to deduce it from the Torah in itself. When it says Ketov Zot, you're going to write this. You're going to write this, which is already written here in the Torah in Shemot and also in Devarim. Zikaron refers to remembrance in Shemuel. And Basefer, Sefer Megillah. So therefore, we could add the Megillah as a book. Right? Why? Because it's not written that it only has to be three times and not four times. Here you see that you could be three, you could be even four times. Because the Sefer is coming to hint to us, Sefer Megillah. So answers the Gemara, you're right. Kitanai, it's a machlok at Tanaim. Ketov Zot, Mashekatuv Khan, right? The, the machlok it is the first one holds Ketov Zot, that which is written here. Zikaron is that which is written in Mishneh Torah. What is Mishneh Torah? Devarim. Ba Sefer, what is Sefer? Mashekatuv Navim. These are the words of Yeshua, which means when it says Ketov Zot, write this, does it include every time that it's written in the Torah? Or is it only this which is written right here in Shemot? And therefore, you need the next word in the pasuk to add on the varim. So that's the entire question. So the first one, Rabbi Yoshua says, Ketov Zot is a Mishalach. Zikaron, the varim. Basefer is Nevim. These are the words of Yeshua. Rabbi Yezer, Rabbi Lazar Modai says, No, Ketov Zot, Mashi Ketov Kan, U Mishneh Torah. Right, write this, that which is written here and in the Mishneh Torah. Zikaron is what's written in the Nevim. Basefer is what's written in the Megillah. And therefore, you could have a Sefer Megillah Esper. Okay, until here we're all clear. Okay. I'm going to view them as Shmuel. It says of you them as Shmuel. Esther ena mitamea et ayadayim. Megillat Esther is not going to be mitamea et ayadayim. Because basically since it's not part of the Ketuvim, right? So therefore it does not, it wasn't part of the Gezerah of the Chachamim to do with Kitve HaKodesh in order to contaminate, right, Truma. So this is actually brought down in the Sechet Shabbat, Yudale Damudalef, there, what happened was that people were hiding Truma by Kitve Kodesh. And therefore, they said, Ze Kodesh, Ze Kodesh is both holy. This is a Torah, or this is Nevi'im Uktuvim. And this is Truma. Truma is holy. So imagine right now, the Kohen used to receive Truma. He used to hide it, right, by the Kitve Kodesh. 
היו עכברים אוכלים מן התרומה, so comes, there were mice that used to come in, yeah? And what happened was is that they were started eating the food. And then what happened? Mazikim et ktavim. So it was destroying, right, the ktavim, right? So then what happens? So now you have a problem. So he says, because of that, they made a gizera. That they made a gizera that it's not going to be metamet a yadayim or not. So the meimra says the gimra, the savar shmuel estel abroch kodesh nimra. Are you going to tell me that Esther, Megillat Esther, was not said Ruach HaKodesh, and that's why it's not part of the Ketubim? How could it be? Of course it was done with Ruach HaKodesh. Rama Shmuel, Shmuel says, Esther Beruach HaKodesh Neemra. It was said with Ruach HaKodesh. Says the Gemara, Neemra Likrot, Velo Neemra Likhtov. It was said to read it, right? To read it with Ruach that was with Ruach HaKodesh, but not to write it, which means to write it between the Ketubim, there, no. That's why it's not part of the Ketubim, according to what the Gemara is saying until now. Right, but to do with reading it, yeah, yeah, it was read with the Ruach Kodesh. So the Gemara is going to ask on this. We're going to, okay? We're going to ask a question. Rabbi Mi, you know, Rabbi Mi says, Kohelet is not metameta yedayim. Machloket by Shira Shidim. So Kohelet is not going to be metameta yedayim because it's not part of the Kitvah Kodesh. But the Machloket between Met Shemayim Met Hilel is to do with Shira Shidim. Rabbi Yosef says, Shira Shidim is metameta yedayim. And the Machloket is by Kohelet, so it's vice versa. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Rabbi Shimon says, Kohelet is Mikule Bet Shamay Mechumer Bet Hillel. It's one of the Kulot of Bet Shamay and the Chumrot of Bet Hillel. Remember, Bet Derech Klal, as a general rule, there's a stigma. Who's always stringent and who's always lenient? So Shama, Bet Shamay or Shamay is always stringent, and Hillel and Bet Hillel are always lenient. Here it's the exact opposite. This is one of the Kulot of Bet Shamay and the stringencies of Hillel, right? Bet Hillel. Aval Rut Veshit Hashim Vestel. So you see from here that it is it is part of the Ketubim and everything. So says the Gemara, you're right. That Megillat Esther was not given to write. Because remember, according to Rav Yoshua, right, what do we just say? Ketov Zot is in Shemot. Zikaron is Devarim. Right? Basefer is Nevim. According to that, according to Rav Yoshua then, they weren't supposed to write Megillat Esther. Megillat Esther was not supposed to be written. So that's why, according to him, it wasn't Mitamei Taidai, but you're not supposed to write Megillat Esther. It was only written three times in the Torah, the wars between Amalek and ourselves, and not four times. You don't want to open up? Ah. Anya, we learned in the right time. Shmuel Menasiah Omer, Shmuel Menasiah says, Kohelet is not Mitamei Taidai. Why? Because it's only the Chokhmah of Shlomo. It's not much like a Sefer. It's not like one of the, the books of the, of the scriptures or the prophets. It was just his wisdom. Obviously, he had the biggest wisdom in the world, but it was just his wisdom. Amrulo, they said, He says, what? This is only Divrei Shlomo? It was already written over there. Right? That means basically it was 3,000 Mishalim. Don't add anything to it. So what does it mean also when it says? So he says, Are you going to tell me Mimar Tuba Amar? That really, Be'emet, there was a lot of things that he said. If he wanted to, he would have written down. If he didn't want, he didn't write it down. Tashemal, Tozav Darav, which means whatever you wrote was written with Ruach HaKodesh. So this actually is bringing to us a proof that it was said with Ruach HaKodesh. Not like what you just said, that it wasn't said with Ruach HaKodesh. So Tanya, we learned in the writer, Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Lezer says, now we're going back to Esther. How do we know Megillat Esther was written also with, with Ruach HaKodesh? So he says, Esther Ruach HaKodesh, Nehemar, Shnehemar, Vayomer Aman Belibo. He says, Aman was said it in his heart. How did you not? Know ah, very good. So it's with Ruach Hakodesh. Rabbi Kiva Omer says another pasuk. What's the other pasuk? But he Esther no set chen Esther was finding grace in the eyes of all the people that saw her. So therefore, obviously, what? Obviously, we're talking about that. It was with how, how, how do we know? How do you know that everyone liked Esther? How do you know? You don't know that unless you have the Ruch HaKodesh. The Bimi'in comes and he says, Esther Ruch HaKodesh Nehemra, Shnehemar, Ba'ivada Adavar Lemordechai. Right? It was known to Mordechai. What does it mean it was known to Mordechai? How did Mordechai know what the, what the plot was against the Hashverosh? He understand the language. Ah. The Yossi, well, that's what we're going to say afterwards. But according to this, it was revealed to him with Ruch HaKodesh. It wasn't that he understood the language. He was revealed to him with Ruch HaKodesh. Rabbi Yosef ben Dumaskit Omer, Rabbi Yosef ben Dumaskit says, Esem Ruch HaKodesh Nehemar Shnehemar, Uva Bizalo Shalchu Yetedam. How do you know that the Jews did not take any of the booty? Remember, afterwards the Jews came and they fought. They killed all their enemies. 
but it says they didn't touch any of the money. How do you know? How do you know that the Jews did not touch any of the money? Maybe they went and they did touch the money. Maybe they took. Yeah? They didn't touch anything. Right? Amma Shmuel, Shmuel says, if I was there between these Tanaim, because remember, you had Rabbi Yezer, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Mir, Rabbi Yoseh. So he says, I would have said, I would have said, I would have said something that was much greater than all of what they said as well. Right? Why? What does it mean, Kimu? Kimu v'kimlu means kimu lemala mashi kimlu lemata. They agreed above to that which they agreed below. Meaning the lower courts, they went and they made an institution. The upper courts, they agree with it. How do you do that? That's only with Ruach HaKodesh. Because how do you know what the upper courts are doing? So it had to be with Ruach HaKodesh. So I would have said that, but that's much more powerful than anything else. Amar Rava, Rava says, Lekulu it pircha. Do you know that all of these, right? All these, Rabbi Yezer, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Nini, Rabbi Yosef, all of them, they have a question against them. There's only one, Lebar Mishmuel, except for Shemuel, the Lele Pircha, that there's no question against him. The Rash, right, the Rabbi Yezer, what was Rabbi Yezer? Rabbi Yezer said, Vayomen Haman belibo. Haman was saying in his heart, who's he going to do better than me? Oh, he said, so he says, Svarahu. So Svarah, Haman had his nose in there. Oh, Haman was a Balgava, Balgaiva, you know what Balgaiva is? Yeah, Agavtan. So he says, there was nobody important to the king like him. He was on the top of the world. So therefore, so therefore he comes and he says, why do you think he comes and he says, bring the Lebush Malchut, bring the Sus, bring the, the Keter. Why was he doing all that? That's It's not Ruach HaKodesh. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that. That's all logic. Right? He was speaking about himself. So therefore, it's a, it's a, that's a question against the one who says Ruch Kodesh. It's logic. Next, what did Rabbi Akiva? What did Rabbi Akiva say? Everybody, everybody saw, her and they were all happy. They were all they find they found favor in the eyes. She found favor in the eyes of everybody. So he says, "Dilma It was like Which means like this: It's natural that people like the women of their country. Yeah, mamash. That's the way it is. People like the women of their country. What does that mean? If you're going to take to a Chinese, right, somebody that's uh, African, they're not going to like it. They're going to like Chinese. Is that the most beautiful in the world? For them, yes. You're going to take a German. For them, the Germans are the most, a Russian, that, a, a American is, the, they find favor in their eyes from their country, right? Even though maybe in everybody else's eyes or a lot of, they're going to say, that's wrong. You're cool. Yeah, but that's just the way. Why? Because this is what they were accustomed to. They saw it. So this is what the beauty is. They're going to see something which is even much more beautiful, but for them, it's not beautiful. Beautiful is something from their country. So here the Gemara says, the Bilazar comes and he said, that it teaches us that for everybody, she looked like their country. Meaning you saw Esther, she looked Persian, she looked Russian, she looked Israeli, Israeli. She, learned, she looked everything. What? She looked from everywhere. She looked from everywhere. She was international. What does that mean? You looked at her and everyone thought to you, she was there. Everyone thought that, so therefore what? Obviously, she's going to find favor in everybody's eyes because everybody likes the winner in their country. What about now Rabbi Min? Rabbi Min was, how was it known to Mordechai? So this is what Richard mentioned before. Right? But they were two Tarshim and they were speaking in Lashon Tarshim. So since Mordechai had to understand the 70 languages because he was part of the, he was part of the Medina Gadol. So he had to understand, all, so therefore he understood the language. So if it's not Ruach HaKodesh, what about Rabbi Yosef ben Durmiskat? Remember, he was the one that said that they didn't, they didn't uh, take any of the booty. They didn't come and they didn't take any of the, of the, of the money or whatever it is that they went and they ran. Is right? it Durmiskat or is it Durmaskit? Durmaskit. It says here. Durmaskit. So it says, Dilma Prastika Shadur. He says, maybe they went and they sent Shluchim to actually make sure. Meaning they sent spies. They went and they were sending all these things, you know, undercover agents. They were all over the place. That's how they knew that they did it. Not because it was Ruach HaKodesh. They made sure that nobody touched anything. Right? They saw. They, were, they let the Jews go. They were able to kill. They went to do it. But they were watching. Right? Everybody comes. They're watching them. That's how they knew. So says the Gemara. But Shmuel, but for sure Shmuel doesn't have a question. Why? Because he said that they received above that which was down below. What type of question are you going to have there? Obviously not. So I'm Ravina. Ravina comes and he says, this is what people say. 
He says, that's why when you have one pilpil kharif, sometimes you have one jalapeno, but it's so spicy. That's much better, right? Than an entire basket full of jalapenos, but they're all half, uh, you know, they're all dull. They're all, it's, they're all nothing. Yeah, you understand? That's why he says, pilpil kharif. So that's why one spicy guy, right? is much better than a, you know, all you need is a spicy one. That's all that you need. Yeah? Sometimes we have that in Beta Knesset. Yiddish here is the shmuel to Namara. That's people are tanaim. Tanaim, exactly. So shmuel, right? That's, and that's why he's saying it. So Shemuel, that's, that's what he said. He's a pilpata kharif that's much better than all the other ones. No, that's Rav. Rav Tano Pali. But Rav and Shemuel were the same time. No, but the Rav and Shemuel were the same time. But usually we say it on Rav. Okay? So now the Gemara says, Rav Yosef, Amar, Rav, Amar, Rav Yosef comes and he actually added in another place. You know how we know that it was done with Rosh HaKodesh? It says, Purim ha'ele lo The days of Purim will never pass by by the Jews. Meaning the Jews will always do Purim. Yeah? So therefore, that's how he says. That's how. He, how do you know that? I, maybe they're, they're going to forget it. But I, I would have said that it's also logic. You know why? When did you find the Jew that doesn't want to party? Okay, but that's just uh, fine, right? But uh, but no. But here he's saying the fact that he says that he would never pass by the Jews, that the Jews will always fulfill Purim. That in itself, right? That's all itself. Yes. Nachman Bar Yitzchak says from here. Instead of that, that it's the same concept, but it just says the remembrance will not go away from the from their children. Okay, two dots. So now we're going to start matanot We're going back to the Mishnah where the Mishnah said matanot Okay, we're on the last line in Zayin Mudalef. Matanot levionim tani Rav Yosef Rav Yosef taught umishloach manot ishlereu shte manot leishechad. Remember the mishloach manot is two manot because it's, it says it's plural mishloach manot. Ish lerehu, one person to his friend. So it's two manot to one friend. Okay, to shte manot leishechad. Matanot levionim, they're both plural. Matanot is plural. Levionim is plural. So therefore, shte matanot, shte minadam, two presents to two different people. Right, that's how we learn it. Rabbi Yudan is tiyah. Rabbi Yudan is tiyah. Shad leroshia. He went and he sent to Roshia on Purim. Atma diig latilta. Right, the thigh of an egel meshulash. So here there's a whole thing, what is the Egel in the Shulash, whether it's going to be Shlishila Betin, like Rashi says, which basically means the third to the stomach, right? But there's a whole bunch of different explanations what does it mean, yeah, Egel right. Mishulash. Yeah, what? No, no, no. Shlishila yeah. Betin, which means it's the third born, okay? Other people say that it's, uh, he says this, right. Yeah, that's, he says some people say other things as well. That he says, Egel, which is Shlish Gidulo, which means a third of its grown. A third of its grown, okay? Then it says, uh, the garba de chamra, a chavit of wine. So did you realize he sent him an egel and wine, food and a drink? Shalach le, he comes and he sent him, right? Zayin mubet. Kiyam tabanu rabenu mishloach manot ish lerehu. Right, why? You sent two manot. You sent a food and a drink. You sent wine and you sent food. So if you were mekayim, mishloach manot. Okay? Rabba shada le lemane bar mor, biyad abaye. Rabba comes and he sent to mari bar mor in the hands of abaye. So here, when it says in the hands of a bayi, it's much more that he did it through a shaliach, right? That's what it, what it comes out, correct? Because he sent it in the hands of a bayi. So he sent male taska de kashba, which is a sack full of uh, dates, umale kasa kimcha davshuna, right? And he says over here, and a kos, a cup full of kemach of chitim uh, kruyot, of uh, roasted kernels, right? Of basically of wheat. Amale abaye abaye comes and he says, hashta marmane, now when you're going to say this, right? He says, I don't understand you. A ben kfar, even if he's going to become a melech, they're not going to take away the basket that he was always uh, feeding for his animal, which means Rabbah, he became a Rosh Hashivan Pumpadita. So still, he's not only sending food, which is mamash. Like, what is this? You understand? Like, if you're so important, what are you sending me? Some toasted kernels. Hey, send me sushi. Send me, you know, send me high class or you're going to start sending me by the way, from here, this is where they get it. This is where they get it, where you're supposed to send something chashuv. Because nowadays, there's a lot of minagim. But some people, they come, they send like candies. They send, but it should be really bad. Something chashuv, it should be something of importance. And some people say, what? Well, chashuv for the kids, but you're not doing it to the kids. You're doing it for the adults. Yeah, the kids give to the kids. That's how it is. You understand? Oh, well, that's what we're saying here. So that's what he's saying. He's saying here, now that he became the, well, what's he coming and he's sending? You know, Rabbi became the Rosh Hashiva. He shouldn't be sending, uh, you know, uh, you know, be, he should be sending uh, very chashuvim. Correct or not? Very important.
יאללה, יאללה, יאללה. אדל שאלה שאדה לאיהו, so that afterwards, מאני בר מור קאמס ואני סנט טו רבה in the hands of אביי, מה לטסקה דה זנגווילה, a sack full of זנגוויל. זנגוויל is a, like ginger, it's a type of a tavlin of a spice. הוא מלא קאסה דה פלפל תאריכתא, and a course full of פלפלים, right, חריפים, right? So אמר אביי, אביי says, השת אמר לא, מור, now מור is going to tell me, אנא שאדלי לחוליה. I send them things which are sweet. Now he's going to come and send me spicy, which means what's going on? Each one, remember, Abaye is always a shliach in both the cases. So when Abaye comes and he's taking for Rava to uh, more, uh, more, uh, Mari Barmar, he comes and he says, one second, but they're going to say that Rava, he became a Rosh Hashiva. Something very chashuv. You don't want to start sending, uh, you know, uh, Shoma, you're going to start sending something so simple. It's not pasut. It's not a, you shouldn't do that. But what happened? He comes and he brings it to him. Now the other one comes and he gives him everything spicy. So he comes and he says, I don't understand. I'm giving you something sweet. You should have a sweet ear or something. Like that. And you're going to give me uh, something. Uh, you just come and you go, what is this? Everything is spicy. What's going on over here? So he comes and he says, Amar Abay Abay says, When I went out of the house of Rabbah to go to the house of Mar- 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 Mar, have a savanna. I was severe. I was satiated. When I got to there, Krivel is sheet inside. You know that they gave me 60 plates. The sheet in mine kedera. Right? That they went, they gave me 60 plates of 60 different foods. So imagine they come and they give you 60 different plates of foods. Right? And I went and I ate 60 pieces. Right? I ate one piece from every single food. So mamash, it was a taster. I tasted one of every single type of the foods that they brought me. And the last one that they brought me, Havukala was called Sli Kedar. You know what Sli Kedar is? Pot roast. Right? It's like pot roast. Right? That means basically it's roasting, but it's in a pot. Right? I wanted to even eat the plate afterwards. Right? This is where it comes the expression, right? It was so yummy. I wanted to eat the. You see what Hatam Sofis is about all this? It's all fixed. Therefore, Abaye comes and he says, That's what people say. Kafina Nya Velo Yada. The Ani is hungry, and he doesn't even know he's hungry. Why? Because since he's always hungry, he thought that he was satiated. He thought that he was full. So imagine, he comes from the house of Rabbi. He thought he was already full. All of a sudden, he comes to the house. And he just starts eating and eating. He says, I don't understand. I didn't even realize that I was hungry. Right? Why? Because uh, he didn't realize. Inami, or if you want, you could say, Rav Chalensi Mashchiyach. What does that mean? There's always a little bit of room in the stomach for something which is sweet. Right? Something, that's how you see it. You see people, mamash, blinded, they come and they go to a weddings. First, they have the smorgasbord, which is the aperitifs, right at the beginning. And they start eating and eating and eating and eating. Then they have the meal. Now, nowadays, they change. Because nowadays, the fancier it gets, the less food they give you. You understand? That's nowadays. Nowadays, you know, it could be a fancy plate. You're paying 150 bucks, but you're paying basically for the plate. And the presentation was there's no food, that's right? There's French, nothing there. That's oh, okay, that's French. Okay, whatever. No, no, that's now the nowadays. That's the nowadays thing, right? But once upon a time, it was a big plate. So you're eating, eating. By the time it comes out, I will. How much can you still eat afterwards? All of a sudden, they come and they take out the dessert table, which the dessert table goes from one end of the hall to the other and the other end of the hall with every single type of fruit in the market, every single type of dessert, every single type of cake, of ice cream, of candies, other. And all of a sudden, you see people running as if they never saw food in their lives. And you say to them, I want. They didn't just stuff themselves. <laughs> there's no takeout. Yeah? So what happens? There's always there's space. Always there's always space for something sweet. <laughs> he says, you know that Abaye Baravi and Khanina Baravi, they used to switch seudot between them. Right? That's what they used to do. They used to switch the seudot between them. And that's how they were making Kayim. So I'm a rabbi, I'm a, right? Now, this is a very famous Gemara, right? I'm sure everyone knows this Gemara, but they like to, this one they like to fulfill. I'm a rabbi, a person is obligated to drink on Purim until he doesn't know the difference between Ben Arura Man the Baruch Mordechai. So just to sh- tell you very, very short, we're going to finish the Gemara, and then, and then I'll tell you something very short on this. They came and they did Sudat Purim together. What happened? Eve soon. So they got drunk. Kam Raba, Raba got up. Shachta Lerebizira. He did Shachita. Right? So this was a proof that uh, even the Babylonians, 
right? They had them wrong, Kimin had. Do Shekita, Lamanu, there's nothing to talk about. He comes, boom, right? He did Shekita. So what happens, right? Lebizera, Lemachar, the next day, Barach Amen Vachye, he comes, he does a miracle, right? And he does Pshiat Ametim. He brings them back. Lishana, the next year, Amale, he comes and he says, he invites him again to the Suda. Why don't we do Suda Purim again together? Amale, he comes and he says, no, 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 no. Not every single year we have miracles happening. <laughs> it's okay. You know, you stay in your place, I stay in my place. We're both very happy. Right? Now, how did you understand this Kimara? So very quickly, this sounds like a, a, a story, which is a proof or a disproof. A rebuttal? Or is it a proof to what we just mentioned? Rebuttal. It sounds like a rebuttal. Why does it sound like a rebuttal? Because I just told you that you should get drunk. And then we just told you the ramifications of getting drunk. And then he tells them next year, I'm not coming with you. Well, why? Because yeah, it doesn't okay. happen, right? So basically, there's a very big pilpul here. This is where the pilpul comes, Richard. About is it al-achal or not? Because the Bet Yosef brings down this Kimadav Rava. And he says that this is a maseli stor. Maseli stor means a story which comes to contradict that which we just said. And therefore, we don't pass like it. And he brings a lot of different Rishonim saying that it is a Zisur Gamur to get drunk. But then afterwards, in Shulchan Ruch, he just brings down the language which Rava said. And he doesn't say anything. So in the Bet Yosef, he's saying that it's a Zisur Gamur. You're not allowed to get drunk. And then all of a sudden, over here, in the Shulchan Ruch, he brings down. So Rav Vadia says he was Chazarbo. He retracted from the Bet Yosef. That's very Dochak. Why? Why is it Dochak? Because how can he say he retracted if he didn't even bring down not one opinion in the Bet Yosef that you should get drunk? Everything in the Bet Yosef was, was, was all against getting drunk. So what's going on there? So therefore, there's a Me'ini. The Me'ini says that it doesn't mean, and there's also a Korban Netanel over here, that basically that the word Ivsum or Levesume does not mean to get drunk. In Aramaic, to get drunk is Levuye. If you look, right? If you look in the Ankalus, the translation in Aramaic of getting drunk, it's Lirave, right? Rave. Resh Vav Yod, exactly. No, that's what we're saying. Right? So what happened? Here it's saying Levesum. Levesum means to get happy. To get a little bit high. You could get a little bit. You should get a little bit. I said, some people automatically are like that, but it doesn't matter. But just, you know, sometimes, right? Okay. Amar Rava. Rava comes and he says, so that was just on. Exactly. Does that always happen? You don't need to give me anything to get me high. Yeah, says Rava. Seuda Purim Shachla Balayla. This is now another halacha. Seuda Purim. If you eat in the night time, lo yitzel chota. You're not going to eat the chova. My time. What's the reason? Yemei mishteves simchati. It's written in Yemei mishteves simchati. Yemei. That means the eating. The Seuda Purim has to be done during the day. Ravashi avayatid kame. Da meima. Ravashi was sitting in front of a meima. Nagav lo atur rabanan. And all of a sudden, they didn't come to the bet of Nash. Amar lei. Why did my time? Why did the rabbis come? My time was not to the rabanan. So he says, maybe they're busy in Suda Purim. Amalei, they couldn't need a night time. Amalei, he says, man, Loshmi ala lemor had the Amar Rava. Rava says, Suda Purim, Shachla bala Vesel Kovato. Amalei, right? In, you're right. Right? So he says, you're right, 100%. Tana minyar bein zimun. He learned it 40 times. The Dami lekeman minuch mi said, once he learned it 40 times, now it's like it's put in his pocket. Meaning, this is why the Chazuni, Shalchan Kanyaski, and others, many times they learn something new. When they learn something new, they just started learning it 40 times. 40 times. One, two, three, four. Why? After you learn something 40 times, it's like it's already in your pocket. So that's why it's so important to learn it again and again and again and again. And you just continue learning it. Chazara. Chazara, Chazara. What? I know. 101 is that you'll never forget it. 101 is that you'll never forget it. But if you put it four times is the minimum, which is called learning. That's 40 you times, it's already in your pocket. That's that's why you so that's why we give an entire week. shield on this, if you remember, about the different <laughs> times. Right? So the different times. Every week. Exactly, 100%. Okay? Next. Says the Mishnah. En Ben. So this is the famous Richard, right? En Ben. Yom Tov le Shabbat. Ela Ochel Nefesh Bilvad. There's no difference between Yom Tov and Shabbat. Only Ochel Nefesh. Only food. Because on Yom Tov, you're allowed to cook for food. But you're not allowed to do anything else. Meaning, you're, just like you're not allowed to do Mechalel Shabbat, you're not to be Mechalel Yom Tov, but anything to do with food, you're allowed to. Says the Gemara, Halin Yan Machshire Ochel Nefesh, but to do with things which prepare Ochel Nefesh, meaning, for example, fixing the knife for the Shechita or the, the, the oven, Zeve Zeh Shavin, they're both the same, that it's going to be a Sur, just like it's a Sur on Shabbat, it's a Sur on Yom Tov. So Matznitin is not like Rabbi Yehuda. The Tanya was learned in the right time, Yom Tov, the Shabbat, and Ochel Nefesh. Rabbi Yehuda says, Matid, even Machshire Ochel Nefesh. So obviously, our Mishnah is not like Rabbi Yehuda, because according to Rabbi Yehuda, he permitted even sharpening the knife. And preparing things for food as well. I mean, not only the food, the actual preparation of the food as well. My Tama, what's the reasoning of Tanakama that he prohibits? 
המלכה, אצל זה לפסוק, הוא, right, הוא לבדו יהיה אצל לכם, הוא ולא מכשידיו. The food itself is permitted, but not the preparations for the food. רב יהודה says, no, אצל זה לפסוק, לכם. What does it mean for you? For you, לכל צורכיכם, for all your necessities. So all your necessities includes the things which are preparing for the food. Ah, says the Gemara, but the Tanakama, Vidach Nami, Ketiv Lechem, it's also written Lechem, so which is for you. It says Lechem, which means there's a prohibition, Mina Torah, to cook for a goy or to cook for a dog, which means you're not allowed to have a goy over to your house on Yom Tov, or a dog. Why? Because the goyim, it says in the Torah, you're only allowed to cook for a Jew. You're not allowed to cook for the goy. So if somebody has a goy in their house on Yom Tov, and that's why you're not allowed to invite them. You're not allowed to invite a goy. You're not allowed to. You're not allowed to come, and you're not allowed to. To what's it called? To to invite a goy to your house on on to invite. You're not allowed to invite a goy to your house on Yom Tov. Why? Because if you cook for him, it's an isur do raita. So he says. One second. Vidach nami the other one. It's also written who uktiv who uktiv lachem. It's written both. Which means it all depends whether you were able to prepare before Yom Tov or not. According to Yehuda, if you were able to prepare before Yom Tov, you had to prepare before Yom Tov, even according to Yehuda. But if you could not prepare before Yom Tov, you could only Yom Tov itself. But according to Tanakama, you could not do any type of preparation whatsoever. Says the Mishnah, "Ein ben Shabbat Yom Kippurim Ela Shezeh Zedono Bidei Adam Vezeh Zedono Bikare." There's no difference between Shabbat and Yom Kippur. You're not allowed to have right. There's no different meaning. Shabbat and Kippur is the same thing. Right, remember that, that even if you remember, um, we even said that it's even more strict Shabbat than Kippur, if you remember. But the only difference is that if somebody is going to be Mechalel Shabbat, they get killed from Bedin Shilmata. If somebody does, uh, does Mechalel Kippur, he gets Karet from Bedin Shilmala. Bedin Shilmata, right, the, the Sekila is more stricter. Any other Bible you Bedin is more stricter than the Karet. It says the Gemara, right? No, no, no. Yeah, uh, never, no. No, Ochel Nefesh is also a story in Kippur. Kippur is not Yom Tov. Okay, it says the Gemara, Hal Inyan Tashlumin, but to do with the Chiyuv of Tashlumin, which means Chiyuv Mita. For example, what happens if a person was Mechalel Shabbat and at the same time they damage somebody's property? Or they're Mechalel Kippur and they damage somebody's property? Zev is a Shavin, they're both going to be Shavin. That means if somebody's going to come and going to light a fire in the friend's, uh, let's say, whatever it is, the friend's uh, property or whatever. So usually we say a concept called Kim Lebed Rabbeminim. Kibal, which is basically, we give them the strict of the two punishments. So that means we kill them and we don't, here in America, what they do is they just get counts. So you have a hundred counts, one count of first degree murder, second degree murder, third degree murder, one count of this, another, by the time the guy finishes, he has to sit 784 years in jail, right? And, and that's it, you understand? But no, by us, you just give them the stricter of the two punishments. You either kill or you get the monetary, uh, but we don't give both. That means if we kill him, we don't we don't come and we don't give him also an, an, an obligation right of a of a thing okay mani matzniting so who is our mishnah he used to make kippur like shabbat for tashlumin and it's just like by shabbat mechalel shabbat they kill them and they don't uh, they don't have to pay so to make kippur the same thing just like by shabbat He's going to be mechayev v'nasho, and he's going to be patur from getting from paying. So to yom kippurim, he's going to be chayav v'nasho, and he's patur mina tashumim. Tzadah nahatam we learned over there mesech makot kol chayav kritut anybody that is chayav kritut karet shelaku that they get lashes nifteru mide kritutam, which means the lashes is instead of karet. They give lashes that exempts them now from karet. Shneim Rabbah says in a pasuk v'nikla achicha leenecha. What does that mean? Kevin shelaka once he gets lashes. He's your brother. What does it mean he's your brother? He gets forgiven for his sin. So the lashes are instead of karet. And that's why there's an inyan, an of kippur, that we come and we give lashes. Right? And Michai comes to me every single year, do the simcha. Boom, lashes. Yeah? Why? Yeah? 39. Why? Because once you do that, that's it. You're, you're out of the karet. So he says, these are the words of Rabbi Chaniyam and Gamliel. Amar Rabbi Yochanan says, Rabbi Yochanan halukin alav chavirav chaniyam and Gamliel. No. The other people, they say, no, that even if Chayvek Ritut, they get lashes, they are not patut from Karet. They still are obligated Karet because it doesn't exempt them. So Amar Rava, Rava comes and he says, Amri Be Rav, we said in the, the students of Rav said, Tanina, we already learned in the Mishnah. Em ben Yom Kippur, in Shabbat, there's no difference in Shabbat and Kippur. El HaShazeh, Zedun, Obi Deadam, Zedun, Obi Karet. One of them is Bidi Adam, which is Skilap and the Betin Shalmata. And the other one is Karet. 
Vinita. Now, if you're gonna tell me like Rochanin Gamiel that somebody that gets karet, but if you give him lashes, he becomes exempt. So then they're both Vidyadamim. Because if you're going to give lashes to somebody, lashes isn't from Shemaim, lashes from Bedin Shilmata, it's from here. So they both are Vidyadam, they both come from the court down below, not the heavenly court. Summer of Nachman says, No, Hamani, who is this of Yitzchaki? There's no malkut bechayvekritut, which means there's machloket, right? That's what we're going to say now, right? We know when somebody gets karet, usually the karet has lashes with it. According to Shittat of Yitzchak, anybody that gets karet, there's no lashes that come with it. So he says, the Tanya was going to write, Rabbi Yitzchak Omer, Rabbi Yitzchak says, chayvekritut bechalalayu, chayvekritut were always in the arayot, which means the majority of all of the immoral relations, they all have karet. Whether it's going to be a nida, whether it's going to be all these things, it's all, it's all karet. So he says, Vilama yatsat, yatsat karet bachoto. So why is it that karet came out from its sister? Why does it say that if somebody takes a sister, again they get karet? Why did it say it twice? Why did it say it already said everyone was already karet? So he says, bekaret, ve, be karet, To judge her in karet and not in lashes, which means it's coming to teach you that there's no lashes, right? When somebody comes and on a sister, Right, even if they come and they, they warn them and everything, there's no lashes. Why? There's karet. Once there's karet, there's no lashes. Ravashi Yaman, Ravashi says, no. Afilu even if you want to say it's rabbis, that there is going to be lashes with karet. One of them, the ikar. What's the ikar? The ikar is karet. When a person comes to Mechalel Kippur, it's karet. There's a secondary uh, punishment. What's that? Lashes. So if you get lashes, you get patu from the karet. But the ikar, the main one, is the karet. And that's why when the Mishnah said that the main punishment is karet, which comes from the heavenly court, and the main punishment for Shabbat is sekila, which is the down below court, that's the main punishment. And it's both correct. But we could be going according to the rabbis that there is lashes by karet, and not like Rabbi Yitzchak, that there is not lashes by karet. Tomorrow, Bezat Hashem, we continue on the Mishnah. What time did I say I was going to finish, David?